Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brun. Yesterday we heard the sad news that Frankie Benali lost his fight with cancer, and we just wanted to spend a few moments remembering his great career and what a great person he was. He's going to have a lot of people that miss him. Rest in peace, Frankie, and let's just listen in on our brief comments and conversation about the late, great Frankie Benali. Hey everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brown. Today I have with me on my show once again my good buddy Vincent LaRussa, and we're here again, unfortunately, Vin, for uh, not the greatest news. I think it's the third time we've had to do something like this recently, so welcome yeah. to the show, buddy, and how are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing okay, thanks. Excellent. So, um, you know, obviously we heard the news yesterday. Um, this one didn't come as a total shock. You know, Frankie Benali passed away yesterday at the age of 68. We knew he'd been fighting cancer for a while, so, um, you know, he has passed along, I guess, at this point. I know the doctors had originally given him only, like, six months to live, and he made it 18 months, so um, not a surprise. He seemed very positive, um, always fighting the, the good fight through this, but um, unfortunately, when you're dealing with cancer, you know, there's not a whole lot you could do sometimes about that, so... What were your thoughts yeah. about him, just, you know, his place in, in the rock world and, 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 you know, all of that? What were your thoughts? I, I started thinking about it, you know, preparing for this. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do that much prep work, but for, for something like this, I, I felt like, you know, I want to make sure I give him as much respect as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just took me back to, I, I guess it was 1983. Yep. Was that when Tom on Feel the Noise came out? Yep, exactly. And really, that was the start of my love for heavy metal music. It was the, mm -hmm. I, I remember buying the 45 after hearing the song, who knows, yep. maybe on the radio. I, I, yep. I know where where we lived, we didn't have MTV. We had Friday night videos. Yep. If you remember that. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, after, you know, purchasing the record, um, I mean, one of the things that stands out is Frankie started in the song. It's exactly. Just, yep. So anytime I hear that, that drum part, I'm a drummer. Mm -hmm. And if you just do that, you know, there's a couple of songs that have used them with probably more than a couple of songs that have mm -hmm. used that, but it's, it's like a signature, you know, it's like a it's like a riff. It, you yeah, know, it's but drum Absolutely. part. And uh, you know, again, if you can have even that as, as your what you leave behind as a legacy that somebody remembers you by, that as far as in the music, I mm -hmm. mean, I'm sure from what I've heard, he's, he was a tremendous human being and, and yep. stuff like that. Um, but uh, I, I immediately thought about that and how mm -hmm. Quiet Riot really started my love for heavy metal, heavy metal music. I mean, mm -hmm. we never considered kiss to be heavy metal. It's right. even though they were kind of like when we bought all the heavy metal mags in the, in the, in the eighties, mm -hmm. uh, they were part of that. But, uh, yeah, I, I just, um, just thought about that. And the other thing I thought about kind of fast forwarding a bit to watching, this was when I did have MTV mm -hmm. and I, I saw that they premiered the, the wasp video for the real me. Mm hmm. And at the time, and I'm a huge Who fan, I mm -hmm. didn't even know that was a Who song. I was like, this is the most incredible song I've ever heard. Yep. Right? And, like, I was like, how did they write this song? Then mm -hmm. I find out it's a Who song. And that's right. like, <laughs> but um, I just love the Waz version of, mm -hmm. of The Real Me, which I think came, was on the Headless Children record. Yep, yep. I think it was like um, 89 or so. 89, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great record. Mm -hmm. And just the stuff that he also did with Wasp. And, mm -hmm. and just being like, that drummer looks familiar. Like, right. and then I kind of realized that it was, it was Frankie Benali. Mm -hmm. And, and also he was the drummer who played on the hearing aid, um, yep. the all-star, you know, metal thing, which was we're like, stars. The, mm -hmm. we're stars. We are mm -hmm. the world. The, mm -hmm. do they know it's Christmas? And then the, right. the metal guys did their thing. So, right. mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty cool. Cause I think Ronnie James Dio was the, uh, organizer of yep. the hearing aid thing. And the, and listen, how many have how many, how many metal drummers did they have at the time? Right. Why right. they pick Frankie? You know? Of course. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. You know, so. you, you're touching on a few things to me, and, and I want to just go back to the come on, feel the noise, right? Yeah. So yeah. you know, so many people, rightly so, point to Quiet Riot as the forefront of that whole '80s metal scene, right? So the Metal Health yeah. album was the first heavy metal hard rock album to hit number one on Billboard. Frankie was a part of that, right? And you hit the nail on the head. To me. When I think of that, I remember having the Come On, Feel the Noise 45. I still have it somewhere. You know, like you said, you know, that drum intro. But that drum intro is not, everybody knows it's a cover tune. But that drum intro is not on the original Slade version. You know, That's so it's right. not It's not like right. he copped something that was on the original. 
that right. was that was his thing and i often say this you know frankie's drums to me echoed in that whole 80s heavy metal hard rock scene you know because mm -hmm. to me that was the first not not just to me but it's truth that was the first song that crossed over into top 40 hard rock you know i think it hit like number five or six on the billboard charts and that was the first big hit from those 80s bands and yeah. what started it doom, bah, doom, bah, yeah. doom. that that drum pattern to me echoed in the whole 80s music scene in my opinion and nobody yeah. could ever take that away from him absolutely and you know it's also something about the production and sound mm -hmm. from that record you know yeah. because you know, not to say, I'm not going to say, because I, I don't know every song of every record that was produced, but I'm just thinking back of 1983, you know, uh, the other record that I guess kind of followed in its tracks was Pyromania that became just yep. like a huge, mm -hmm. you know, uh, huge success for Def Leppard and put them on the map. Mm -hmm. But the drum sound was something also that I think when producers of the, the next or that generation of bands were coming like, wow, we got to, we got to kind of do a quiet ride here, here mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, then it just got bigger and bigger hairs mm -hmm. and more Aquanet got more sprays and more, <laughs> you know what I mean? as a heavy metal scene, you know, uh -huh. but, uh, yeah, that was another thing too, just from a production and sound standpoint, just listening to those drums with mm -hmm. the, with the, with the rate reverb on the snare, right. the big right. bass drum sound. Absolutely. You know, I'm glad you brought up the Aquanet thing. So one of the yeah. stories I remember reading about Frankie is he, he like Eric Carr, had that big, curly, poofy hair. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I actually read where him and Eric would joke about the fact that they'd get actually mistaken for each other a few times. Yeah. And you know, I never, Frankie yeah. would have to, some Kiss fans would come up to Frankie and be like, hey, can you sign this album? And it would be a Kiss album. And Eric would sometimes get that the other way around with Quiet Riot. And I'd never thought of that in the 80s because to me, they were two very different people. I knew who each of them were. But apparently that big poofy hair that both Eric and Frankie had, they were mistaken for each other a few times and more than wow. a few times in the 80s. So that's, that's a funny story, I thought. Yeah, I didn't even know about that. But now that you mentioned that, I'm like, I could see why that <laughs> yeah, is. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know about the height because I, I know Eric was, was the shortest of mm -hmm. all the KISS members, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it's about the same height as, uh, as Frankie, but... Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not. I'm not sure, but I just I remember reading that and thinking oh, that's a pretty funny story. So, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned Wasp before, also, and and I I'm probably yeah. a bigger Wasp fan than than you are. I had a number of the albums in the '80s and the '90s, um, and yeah. to me, you know, you mentioned before the Real Me, which is great. For me, one of my favorite Wasp Wasp songs is a song that's a little bit out of character for them, but Hold On to My Heart, which is on the Crimson Idol, which Frankie yeah. played on, and it's more of like a ballad type thing, and um. Yeah. You know, um, I love that. Absolutely love that song. And, you know, Frankie, I think, played on is like six or seven. I think it's seven Wasp yeah, albums, looking, you know, so. Look at here. It's, it's about, yeah, about even more. I think even it's more, uh, right. about eight of what I'm seeing. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, one yeah. of them might be like a greatest hits package that he was included on. I, I'm not sure. Like, yeah. Um, but but regardless, he, he, you know, people think of him as the Quiet Riot drama, rightly so, for all the reasons we were mm -hmm. just saying. But, um, yeah. you know, he also had a lot of work with... Um, with Wasp and it's kind of sad to me. I was thinking about this today and we started off saying this, like the third one of these that we've had to do in the last like eight weeks. Well, you know, some of those Wasp albums was Blackie, Frankie, Bob Kulik. That's right. You know, so it's kind of sad. And, and if you go online and look, you'll see Blackie Laws made an incredible post about Frankie. Uh, it's very long, um, very detailed, you know, clearly Frankie had an impact on Blackie and um, it's really nice. If you have a moment, go check it out and read it. But um, I was kind of thinking about, again, loving that song, Hold On To Your Heart. I was like, ah, God, you know, two of the th those three main key guys on that song, they, they're gone. It's kind of, yeah. it's sad. It's making us realize, you know, these guys are not getting any younger. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people would s sometimes criticize Frankie the last few years for holding on to the Quiet Riot thing when he was the only guy from the, from the classic era lineup. But, you know, clearly from everything you've read, Frankie just loved playing, loved the music, um, loved being out there with the fans. I know a few yeah. people who met him and they have nothing but great things to say. And, um, you know, even, you know, Quiet Riot now with, with Kevin gone and now Frankie gone, that's probably it. We'll probably never see a version of Quiet Riot again live. Yeah, I think, you know, to what you're saying, I don't know if you ever had the chance to watch the uh, the documentary that came mm -hmm. out, I want to say two or three years ago, that, that was centered around Frankie. Frankie mm -hmm. was the one who uh, really was kind of still trying to wave that Quiet Riot flag. It's a wonderful documentary. Yep. Um, and, and when you watch it, you see how 
he still has this turmoil within himself that he can't forgive mm-hmm. uh, Kevin, you know. Um, and I think rightly so, you know, because he feels like, I guess they tried to help Kevin or whatever they did, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, to, to rid of his demons and drug and alcohol abuse or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And um, it just, I think, you know, some people could look at that both ways, but what, the way I took it was that it was so deep in his heart, his love for that band and his love for Kevin, you know, mm-hmm. that he just, it was so hard for him to get past it, you know? Right. If he didn't feel that way, he would have just been like, all right, you know, I could, I could, I could hold on to my Wasp legacy or right. I could, you know, play with this, but it was just so much a part of it in his DNA, it became, mm-hmm. you know? Um, mm-hmm. And also, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but did he also play with Randy Rhodes? Because Randy Rhodes was in Quiet Riot on the yeah. early on. So was Frankie the drummer? No, he wasn't the drummer on those albums. I don't know if he ever played with them. I thought Frankie came into the picture in that mm-hmm. transition period. Um, okay. But I'm not 100% positive. I'm sure somebody watching this could, could leave comments and let us know for sure. But I don't think fact Frankie's on... Us, even yeah. though we're not stating it as facts. Right, exactly. Yeah. But I, I don't think Frankie's on... That. I don't think Frankie's on either of those two albums that were released in Japan. I think he came in afterwards. Okay. So, but there might have been a brief overlap of Randy still being in the band and Frankie being. A, I'm not 100 percent positive on that timeline. Yeah. Yeah. But I do know that Frankie did play a little bit with um, Billy Idol, right? So, you know, right. I don't think he recorded with him, but I I know he did play with Billy Idol. And a little known fact about Frankie: he actually played one show in the recent years filling in for twisted sister after ag Pe- oh, yeah. so um you know as yesterday today news broke of this you saw all these different people in the industry you know whether it was you know zach wilde whether it was martha quinn actually from mtv you know posted something about him we saw paul stanley posted something about him lita ford many many others robert fleischman had posted about him obviously i mentioned blackie lawless um Clearly, Frankie had an impact on quite a number of people in the industry. And, um, you know, from every account, it was a great guy. People really respected how open he was the last, you know, 18 months or so while he was sick. Even as recently as I think it was last week, he posted online that he'd been in the hospital for three weeks and that he was finally home. He was recovering. He was resting. Um, he was always very open about what was going on. I think a lot of people just respected that and really appreciated, you know, the fight that he put in. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and recently when you had your interview with Rudy Sarzo, he mm-hmm. mentioned, you know, yeah. what a fighter exactly. he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he is, and he, and Rudy even felt like he was gonna he was gonna beat it because mm-hmm. he was such a fighter. And unfortunately, you know. Sometimes the powers that be, whoever they are, mm-hmm. just you can't, you just can't, you know. Even yep. though you, you try, and, and it's just something to be said about, you know, the the fight that he put forth to try to beat Absolutely. this thing. Because it's not. I mean, I have never gone through it, but I know a family who's gone through it, mm-hmm. and friends and stuff like that. And from all accounts, it's just so hard to get past all the treatments and being in the yep. hospital. Just, man, it's just terrible. But. Um, but, you know, again, as we always say, we're making this a celebration of Frankie. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, and uh, you, you know how we usually end our mm-hmm. conversations, like, go listen to his records, mm-hmm. listen to everything he was a part of, mm-hmm. even listen to the records that kind of were influenced by the bands that we mentioned, yep. you know, mm-hmm. like we were saying. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a it's a sad it's a sad day or day after at this mm-hmm. point but uh again that's what i intend on doing it's, absolutely you know, i'm going to put on those records and listen to them absolutely well said and um you know 68 years old he did live a good life and you know i know on his facebook posts um facebook page he had put something over the last year you know used to be a rock god now i'm just the guy next door and yeah. you know um in some ways i kind of felt like that was cool like he almost seemed like comfortable with the fact that hey you know what hey i'm just the guy next door now i go out i play sometimes with, with quiet riot um but he lived a, a great life and unfortunately it was taken a little too soon but like you said let's celebrate the music go listen to come on feel the noise go listen to quiet riot go listen to some of those wasps albums and um just enjoy what he left behind because there's, there's a great legacy there and and you know he's obviously going to be missed in the hard rock and metal community yeah, and, and, and just one thing as a musician, and just thinking about, because he did die relatively young, mm-hmm. um, 
but think about the life that he had. You know, I, I as a musician have played a couple of shows when I've done like the Motley Crue tribute thing, and maybe there's, you know, 500 people in the audience when I played mm -hmm. out by you in Long Island, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I stepped onto the stage and I looked to set up and I just saw a crowd of people mm -hmm. and like kind of took my breath away. I, I'd never experienced. And from mm -hmm. the, the first note, and we had the people pumping their fists. And now think about that of tens of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Didn't they play the Us Festival? Yep. Right? Yep. Absolutely. Can you imagine what that feel? I, I just get chills thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Like to have your life and have that experience as a musician, mm -hmm. I, I can't even imagine what that's like, and, mm -hmm. you know, and then to do it over and over again at the height uh, and then being played all over MTV. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not saying that if you had to like live a shorter life but experience that, would you take it? Mm -hmm. But for people like me, I'm thinking like maybe I would. You know, right, right. well, because well, it's something you know that musicians dream of. You know, so absolutely. I mean that makes me feel better for him that he had this great life, even though he had a lot of things and demons he was fighting later on because mm -hmm. of Quiet Riot and uh, and Kevin and all that stuff, but absolutely no one could ever take that away from him. Those, you know, that experiences that he had, you know, mm -hmm. so. on, on his worst days when he was playing in clubs, he still mm -hmm. accomplished more than 99.9% .9 of musicians do on their right. best days. Right. So right. on, on absolutely. most musicians, best days, that was Frankie Benelli's worst day. Right. Yeah. That, that's pretty damn good. Right. And like you said, yeah. playing to tens of thousands of people with quiet riot, et cetera. Um, it's it's a tremendous career and he's he's without a doubt he's going to be missed. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, so I think I think we kind of covered everything we wanted to chat about Frankie. Um, you know, rest in peace, Frankie. Like you said, listen to the music, celebrate his life, celebrate his legacy. There's a lot to celebrate there. So um, thank absolutely. thank you everybody for watching and let's hope we don't have to do another one like this anytime soon, buddy. Yep, I agree. All righty, take it easy, everybody. Take care. Once again, rest in peace, Frankie, and thanks for all the wonderful memories. If you've watched this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. See you next time.